Today, we're gonna to talk about broken bones. I'm Dr. Matthew Harb, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and let's get to it. You broke or think you broke a bone, what should you do? It's a common question that everyone has. Most of us live an active lifestyle and we're prone to bumps and bruises from time to time. Maybe as little as a ground level trip and fall or twisting your ankle from a sports injury to something more significant like a car crash. Orthopedic surgeons see and treat patients after these injuries. And sometimes you don't always know if you broke something, just sprained it or just a little bruise. The first steps for any type of injury is early intervention and symptom control. This can be done by avoiding weight bearing, ice therapy, compression in the form of a brace, and sometimes anti-inflammatories and elevation. Ice therapy is a great first step after an injury. It helps bring down the swelling and also provides an anesthetic effect. Surgeons will use ice in their post-operative patients to help bring the swelling down. There is no evidence to state that ice slows down the healing process. It's a very good anesthetic and will decrease swelling. I use it in all my patients post-operatively after their hip or knee replacement operations. If you have a brace or wrap, that can be very helpful as well. This will provide compression to the area and can help slow down the swelling process as well as give the area more support. The swelling is one of the most painful parts of the injury. This is because the swelling pushes on the nerves which causes significant discomfort. The next step after initial control will be to see your doctor for a checkup. In the office, we usually perform a clinical exam to test the stability or see where you have pain. We can correlate this exam with different injury patterns and most of the time figure out a diagnosis. The first and most basic test that we'll order is usually an x-ray. An x-ray can show a lot. It shows the overall alignment of the bones and what the joints look like. You can see if there's a dislocation and make sure that everything's still in place. It can give you an idea of the soft tissue structures, although x-rays really just show the bones, the space between the bones sometimes shows how much cartilage is left in the joint. If more information is needed, we'll sometimes order an advanced image test such as an MRI, ultrasound, or CAT scan. If you do have a fracture and it's not displaced, many times we can cast or splint the area and this will heal on its own without surgery. It usually takes about two to three months for a bone to remodel and heal. That healing process is initially with soft bone followed by hard callus, which would be the final form of healing. The biggest thing is getting back to weight bearing early on the joint. We want the bone to be healed enough before we start the weight bearing process. We also wanna ensure that you get range of motion so the joint doesn't get stiff. Bone Bones break in a predictable manner, so we have a lot of evidence on how to treat different fracture types. If the fracture is displaced or you had a joint dislocation or serious ligament injuries, then a lot of the times that will require surgery. It also will depend on the degree of damage that's done. Once surgery is scheduled, we'll set a date and we'll make sure you're medically stable before having the procedure. On the day of surgery, we'll take you into the operating room. From there, an incision will be made. Then we'll perform our surgical dissection where we dissect down to the bone very carefully to preserve all the soft tissue structures, prevent damage to nerves and arteries and other important things. We will then usually perform what's called an open reduction internal fixation, where we use a series of clamps or pins to reduce the fracture, meaning to put the fracture back in place, and then fix it or lock it into place with a plate and screws. We use x-rays most of the time throughout the operation to make sure that everything is in the right place before we close you up. At the time of the closure, we'll use either staples or sutures. Most of the time, I I use sutures because it creates a nice scar. If you get surgery, it usually takes about two to three months before you can start putting weight on the joint. Once again, this is specific to the type of injury. During that time period, we wanna to continue to work on motion and physical therapy and make sure your joint doesn't get stiff. Once you're out of the cast, it may take six to 12 months for a full recovery. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more content. 